how do we handle contained production pharmaceutical industries from the raw materials to the blistered and packed capsules or tablets? Excellence United provide the complete production equipment to achieve this goal. In dispensing the raw materials, we are dealing with the pure active substances. And high containment, we are talking about active substances that may only be present in the air in micrograms per cubic meter. The concentrations are as low as if you were to disperse a cube of sugar in the volume of the Empire State Building. You can't see it and you can't smell it. These small concentrations can only be handled in the isolator. Here it is even possible to handle API with an OEL of less than 50 nanograms per cubic meter. Well, that's one sugar cube in 20 Empire State Building. Interfaces for product transfer must be specially designed. Split butterfly valves have become standard in the pharmaceutical industry to control concentrations down to well below down 0.1 microgram per cubic meter. These flaps consist of two halves that form together one single flap. This way, only the inner part comes in contact with the product. The outer always mines free from product residues and therefore offers the highest safety and lowest concentration of the active ingredient in the environment. From the isolator, the product passes in a container with a split butterfly valve into the high shake granulator. Here, the wet granules are produced, which is sifted and fed into the fluid bed machine. The fluid bed has a negative pressure of 10,000 Pascal. At this negative pressure, no product can escape to the, the surroundings. Here, the wet granules are dried to the required LOD. After the drying process, the granulate is transferred in a closed pneumatic transfer via a so-called PTS system into the container to which additives are introduced to facilitate tabletting. Of course, this container has also a split butterfly valve to keep the concentration of the active ingredient in the environment within the permitted range at all times. The excipients and the granulate are finally mixed intensively container blender and we obtain a granulate that can be pressed and tapped and pressed or filled into a capsule in the capsule filler. Let's see what Fred and Howard Hilfler are doing in containment. Thank you Glad for handing over the powder and now it's our task to fill that into capsules. Okay, let's talk about containment. Containment at Harro Höfliger. You know, Harro Höfliger is active in several business fields where containment may be required. We have containment executions and inhalation machines where we fill powder into inhalation devices where this containment may be required. We have also our capture filling machines. We have standard execution, but also containment. So here, containment is a big word. We had once a project where we have for our portion pack machines, a solution with containment. I want to point out here that we have one dedicated design department which is creating all of our containment solutions. This gives us a broad view into the containment market and gives you the advantages and synergies. At Haro Höflige we have one idea. The product of our customers defines the process. Of course, we see market trends and we see market regulations which shape our containment processes. But the core is the product of our customer. With that in mind and in combination with standardized design and years of experience, we create a containment that suits our customers perfectly. But why containment? I want to give you here three examples. First of all, containment may be required because we want to save the operator. If you have high potent APIs, you think about OEB5, OEB6 processes and operations. 
On the other hand, we need containment to protect the product from the environment. For example, we can control relative humidity, temperature, or we fill products surrounded by nitrogen. Probiotics is here an example. The third alternative is a containment which protects the product from the operator. If a capsule costs several hundred of dollars, this may be required. Or if you have authorities, federal authorities, looking into that, then you want to lock the doors, right? Narcotics is here the point. In the first example, we considered operator protection, and this is crucial. And we have here to think about dust exposure. Dust exposure needs to be controlled. With a constant air exchange and a negative pressure, with filters, with an RTP port, of course, we save the operator. But Haro Hilfiger wants to take now one step further. We want to reduce the dust exposure where dust is created. If you have, for instance, a powder blend, which has a certain portion of fines running on a tamping pin station, you know what can happen, right? API can be everywhere. HH partnered now with a big pharmaceutical company to develop a dosing system which is totally closed. And we call that technology sonication technology. What we see here is a dosing system mounted on a trolley. This is for our Modo C LS, our low speed machine. That dosing system is totally closed. We infeed here with that interface our powder. We have here several opportunities. We can install here an inline sieving module which stores powder above the sieve and we initiate that sieve with ultrasonic or pneumatic system and then the powder snows into that system. With that speaker here in the back, we push that powder into the powder chamber. We can open here a valve and the powder flows into the powder chamber. We have another speaker here at the top, which is pushing the powder to the lower end of the dosing system. We level out our powder here and we break powder bridges which could accumulate. Additionally, here is a finger which is driving horizontal and has also an ultrasonic vibration installed. So that fluidizes our powder until it gets dosed. And the only area where powder comes out of that system is really underneath the system, before the powder falls into the capsule. We can calibrate and adjust that AMV sensor 100% automatically while swiveling over the dosing head, a buffer and load cell, and while we are dosing into calibration container and moving this calibration container to a load cell, we get the real measured value of that dosing. And with that numbers, we can adjust and calibrate our net weight detection. This closed system helps us, of course, if we think about dust exposure and if we think about cross-contamination, because here we reduce our surfaces, which are covered with API. Our capsule filling machines have one purpose. We fill your product into a capsule. It can be powder, pellets, tablets, or liquids, and even combinations are possible. And this under contained conditions. At the end of our process, I take the filled capsules and hand them over to Ullmann. Thank you, Glad, for handing over the powder. Now it's our task to make tablets out of it. Before we do so, I would like to show you how we handle containment projects. And it all starts with your requirements. This is the Containment Guard app. It is usually the best way to start a containment project. First of all, we start with the containment performance target. It is evaluated based on whatever information or data from your side is available, which can be either an OEL together with a drug load or a CPT or design exposure limit. Once we have together established the containment requirements, this app then helps us to look into all three major aspects of such a project, which is how we can build up on your side and deliver the competence necessary, 
which technology is most suitable for this specific project and which kind of service during the project and after um, the project has been finished is of value and would best suit your specific needs. As part of our competence, we offer a wide range of smart tools. For demonstration and training purpose, we use, for example, virtual reality. This is an important module of our overall philosophy. The awareness of the operators and the maintenance staff, how to handle these products, is one of the successes for contain production. Let's step into this technology. Based on the contain performance target, we offer a wide range of machinery, safety equipment and process equipment. As an example of the lower end contain portfolio, I will show you our FE55 containment guard version. This is an FE series machine that is equipped with several distinct containment features. This setup is based on conventional cleaning that allows the cleaning process before opening the containment barrier. Specific features that focus on operator safety as well as product safety are integrated in this machine design. On the upper level of containment requirements, we offer our I-series based machine family. These machines will allow a fully automated and validatable washing in place process for the complete system. This model is our 2090 CG whip with isolator for the process equipment. The powder I received from GLAD would be fed from the top, compressed, de-dusted and controlled on a metal check. Finally, we would receive a fully checked tablet. And this is the point where I hand over the tablets to our Excellence United Partners GLAD if the tablets need to be coated or directly to Ullmann for packaging. The tablets that I have here from FETE are processed now in the tablet coder. Containment is required especially for the charging process when the uncoated tablets are fed into the coder. Here, a film coating is applied. Pharmaceutical, this film coating is used for controlled release. Containment-wise, depending on the application, the coating is like a primary containment around the tablet. But if this is required, for whatever reasons, charging can easily be handled through the split butterfly valve, which takes care that even concentrations well below 100 nanogram per cubic meter can be handled safely. The tablets now need a blister around and the package. Let's have a look at the Ullmann packaging machines. Thank you, Fette, for the tablets. Thank you, Haro, for the capsules. And thank you, Glad, for the coded tablets. We're now talking about the packaging process under containment. Welcome at Ullmann. As in the manufacturing and production steps of our Excellence United Partners, is packaging an area where containment is a good option to protect the product and or personnel. During the process, dust and debris has to be separated from the product to be packaged. This is a normal requirement for the blister process as these particles have to be kept outside the finished product, the blister. An additional task now comes into the packaging process when we have to deal with potent drugs or sensitive drugs in the packaging area. To protect the health of the operating staff or the physical properties of the product, a containment around the blister process can be applied. The containment system does prevent emissions to the environment or exposure of the product to a desired level. Now, let's talk about the scoping of a containment system. Sensitive products need a certain environment to maintain its capabilities. A containment system is an excellent choice to protect the product until the primary packaging process is concluded on the blister machine. The same goes for operator safety. With a good system, 
you can assure that the health of those operating and maintaining the system is protected. May it be production of product or personnel, the design of a containment system, and the integration into the blister process is the most critical step on the way to a good solution. Here we need to consider operation and setup, integration to the facility infrastructure, cleaning and qualification, engineering to purpose. Furthermore, a good technical solution has to be scalable to the needs of the exposure levels, ergonomics and operations. This very important phase of the equipment generation phase is guided by our experts to assure a system that meets and exceeds the requirements and expectations of our customers. How does the packaging process look like? On the way from the transport device to the blister, the transition has to be safe and reliable. For smaller batches, this often happens in bags up to 20 liters. These are opened already in a chamber which is part of the containment system and entered safely into the feeding device. Larger batches are commonly delivered in bins and drums to the packaging room and are connected directly through a safety valve to protect personnel or product. Here already begins the task of preventing dust and debris from spreading too far into the filling area of the machine. This is achieved with mechanical solutions and ventilation engineering. The feeding solution assures a high degree of efficiency in terms of fill efficiency and performance. Good engineering solutions provide also the means of fast changeover and cleaning procedures. Once safely placed into the blister, the inspection and sealing process finish the quality step of closing the blister in a very high degree of process reliability. From here on out, we have a regular process, not too much different to a normal blister process without a containment system. Follow it by a carting process with adding blisters and patient information into a carton. There might also be check weighing, stretch bending, case packaging and pelletizing, equipment for scene and track and trace steps involved. All this can be included into a package and handled by Ullman as a single source. For more than 20 years, we have been exposed to this very important aspect of packaging and have provided more blister machines with containment systems to the market than anybody else. We have learned from many applications and often unique situations, now knowing what the pain points of our customers are. Our network within the Excellence United lets us learn and benefit from each other's experience and know-how to add value to your application. Once the packaging process is completed, each individual product now has its own containment system inside the perfect blister from home. Yeah, hello dear audience from Achema Pulse. I hope you enjoyed our video and uh, we are from Excellence United, different companies for companies involved here from uh, capture filling experts from tablet pressing. Um, yeah, we have Glad with us and Ullmann for blistering. And I hope you find already the, the question portion of that um, tool so you can enter here some questions on the right side of your screen we will see that questions um, you do not have other options to talk with us so use that chat function and then we will discuss these questions here within the team we can also uh, introduce ourselves but I, th I think we should rather focus on the questions yesterday we had also a workshop regarding leadership of containment and here we found also two interesting questions we want to bring in today if we have no upcoming question um, so one question was really how do we reduce our time to market i think this is an, an important topic and all of our clients are interested in finding out how we do that 
Um, maybe I can bring that question already up now to discuss that. Um, so how, dear team, do we reduce time to market in our case? Well, Daniel, thank you very much. Let me let me get that started. Um, one of the, 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 the key issues in my experience is that we talk early with all people involved and get everybody on board that has a, a, a participation, some type of role in the project as we go down the road. Even if it's in the very beginning, it's very important for us to get to know all the needs and wants and get to know all the, the, the people that uh, have a say and an interest, uh, stakeholders, that was the word I was looking for, have all the stakeholders on board and get them, um, you know, get them involved. That will help us if we, in my experience, if they come on later, many times we go back and lose weeks of time of our valuable time. And that is a key feature for us to get faster to the market. And maybe I can add to this, Christian. Um, it's, for us, it's also um, the possibility to define certain packages, if you like, so machines with containment um, um, capabilities. And, and the more um, standardized this approach is, the more you can um, receive and, and gather information up front. So we try to measure them up front and um, are therefore able to um, present data quite early and um, the customer can just make use of this and, and maybe save some time during the process um, because all the information is there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. Perfect. Yeah. We do also have now our first question, which is coming from the audience. What is the chance of segregation in the newly developed capsule filling system? And I think this is also for fat interesting for caps uh, for tablet pressing segregation, I think is an uh, important word. Um, for capture filling here, it's important to see why do we have a segregation? So we have to look into the powder first. How is the parcel size distribution? How is the blend? We have to understand that. And um, then of course we do test the new systems at HH. We do have pharma service. We uh, do have the systems available. We can do active trials to test that segregation as well. And um, yeah, we can measure different timings, different points within the powder bed to see if we have segregation or not. Um, but basically during the design already, we do see that segregation topic and we do consider that during our design. So we um, design accordingly to prevent segregation. I hope that answers uh, your question. Um, from my side, I can also add to this. Um, um, it's totally correct. I think um, everybody here in the call um, relies to a certain extent on a laboratory um, equipment, laboratory expertise. And each company has, and, and since we are dealing with quite complex products, all um, 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 product um, API exhibient uh, um, formulations are individual. And the more you can test, the more you, uh, experience you have, the better. And as always with these OSD uh, products, um, the less um, inertia, the less, the less force you apply um, to a power, the better. And again, it, it comes down to testing. It's all about geometry experience. <laughs> And also for us, um, applies the same. We can test powder quite extensively and we have all filling devices that are available um, for testing. So that's the best approach. If a certain project or interest comes up, um, it's always the best way to start and um, to do testing. Yeah. And if we think about segregation, we maybe have to consider also a long run. So if our customer wants to send over powder to test that, we need enough powder to have this long period run to see also a long perspective of that segregation topic. Okay. Um, also yesterday was popping up a question considering a perfect project and how, who has the lead in this project if a project comes in and maybe we have to share it within the team. How does that work? Yes, it's a good question, but uh, it really depends on uh, where the project is and who has the relationship with the client. So if there's a certain country and uh, one of the excellent United uh, partners has a good relationship, then he goes first in the lead and remains in the lead. Um, we can even put uh, local project managers in place 
who then are the contact locally uh, to the client and he coordinates uh, the communication uh, to each of the companies involved in a project. We could also look at the size of the, if one has a big uh, scope, then of course uh, he could go in the lead, but we are really flexible. It depends, we look at it as a group, uh, what is the best setup for the client and what feels the client uh, most comfortable with and choose that way um, how we set up uh, the management of uh, such a project. Perfect. So far, there's no further question from the audience. Maybe we can trigger some ideas if our audience um, says where they are located from a department perspective and besides. But Christian, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was one question from this morning when we had the expert talk rounds is still, we, we couldn't finally answer that or we, we had some uh, remains open and I thought that was a very interesting question I would like to bring that up again and that is con uh, concerning after we have the primary packaging done you know into a tablet uh, into a blister uh, what happens in the uh, continuation in the packaging process when you run into secondary packaging and I think uh, we, we could bring that up again and, and share with the audience our thoughts there um, because in my experience um, the the risks they start, you know, even in the blister machine with punching. Uh, if you cut through a cavity and cut the capsule, worst case, mm. even worse than a tab tablet, then you have uh, grams of the material. You don't want milligrams in the packaging room. You have grams in the machine. Granted, um, it's not dispersed as in a. Uh, you put it out like like a powder. You don't uh, expose it in in an, in an air, turbulent air, um, but it is not, nonetheless it's exposed. And here we we do have um, in our in our repertoire we have uh, um, an exhaust system that we then uh, put in place at the transfer station and the blister and the punch station that takes care of that. But that's not the last. That's not the last uh, area where. Things can happen. One is to transfer from the blister machine into the cartoning machine, and here we we also um, have countings of blisters into the packaging chain. That's an area where things can happen. And once we put it into the carton, that's also a, a mechanical movement which um, tends to um, sometimes cause problems. And there also the primary containment around the blist around the product the blisters then the containment system uh, is breached and we have the products all over the floor and in the machine and worse is it's not on the floor where you can see it it's inside the machinery and a small tablet or uh, portions of a tablet can go into small gaps and they're not visible in line clearance and over time you then also have an accumulation of single products or even worse multiple products, and we talk then about a cocktail that then is in the packaging room and it's there. Yeah. And um, we, we, we found that this is an, an area that nobody talks about and is still uh, a question that will or might come up in the future. It all sees how the risk management is handled there. Yeah. Now, Maybe we can this. Okay, okay, go ahead, Martin. Yeah. Just briefly want to add something to this. Um, so um, my experience is um, especially occupational hygiene experts and a lot of companies are having their eyes on this. So that's part of the risk assessment. But um, I think it's important to, to notice there that the uh, all the thresholds we are talking about, OEL or whatever, they are um, understood as a, con a concentration that can be there over the whole working day for the whole working life of the operator. So whenever we see um, incidences or have a risk of something happening, um, not very frequently, but on a, within a longer stretch of, of time, that's something really important to consider there. And, and they would usually um, first start to look at the nature of the compound. So if it's something like a steepling, sleeping pill or steeping um, um, agent that would have immediate effect at something else. But if it's just um, an amount adding up, um, I think it's something that, um, that is usually considered, but I totally agree. Um, the interaction communication between machine design, um, machine delivery and, and, and using is something that can be enhanced there. Perfect. Do we see any further trends 
in combination with containment is maybe continuous manufacturing, pure API filling, something uh, which you see OEB6 um, containment was a topic uh, this morning. Which trend do you want to point out to the whole team? Yeah, from, mm -hmm. from my side, um, thanks Daniel first um, for the question. Um, yeah, we do see um, a trend towards um, higher potent APIs, that is the case. Um, that being said, um, at least for tablet presses, this often goes along with a decrease um, in um, um, the percentage of API within the final drug product. So it's, it's a mixed bunch. But we do see requests with um, ever lower um, OEL levels. And secondly, we do see a lot of legacy products uh, which are in the market for quite some time um, that are reassessed um, towards their um, um, safety implications and that need to be manufactured under certain um, basic uh, containment um, considerations uh, when prior to this um, there were no uh, requirements for operator safety. So there's an increased focus on this and around the world. So it's not nothing specific to um, um, to a certain area like Europe or the US. So we see this um, increase in requirements for containment all over the world. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Martin. Uh, I, for, I think for... just just a short. Uh, it is correct that the dilution factor here is an important role. Uh, we see um, Scott is doing the dispensing. Yes, there are high requirements if you have a high potent API in the dispensing area, but there already the dilution starts in the first process steps. And uh, we see also that many do consider to go one or even two levels down after the code of the tablet, because the code, uh, the code already protects uh, the API inside the tablet. So you get a kind of containment of the tablet itself. So many, even blue chip companies, they say after the tablet coaching, you can go one or two steps down. In yep. When you start at five during the process, after coaching, you could go down to three, four. Mm -hmm. So it yep. is really the strategy of containment. You have to choose when you, when you discuss the whole chain from dispensing to the final pack, um, how do you determine your OEB levels in each of these uh, process steps that we can help uh, with our experience uh, we have from worldwide projects on that matter. Okay, yeah, perfect. And thank you for that discussion. To discuss further trends with us within Excellence United, um, you are very welcome to call us, to write us emails, to use that function within this Achima Pulse um, chat function. So thank you very much for your time and hopefully you enjoyed that video you just saw. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.